my name is Kate Cavanaugh. I'm 31. I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut, and I am a tap dancer. When I was four, my mom enrolled me in a tap class at the Jackie Lynn School of Dance in Middletown, Connecticut. Tap was the only form of dance I did for a number of years, and that's probably one of the reasons why I like it so much. Growing up at the studio uh, it was really, really grueling. We would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. Um, we learned a lot of choreography and not so much with the technique. Um, so I feel like, in a way, I missed out on a lot of what tap was really about. I didn't know anything about improv, didn't know anything about the Shim Sham or any sort of history of tap until I think I was a senior in high school or even in college um, where I really started to expand my knowledge of tap. I didn't really know about the other forms of tap dance that were out there. I mean, I had seen movies with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and Shirley Temple, but I had no idea what was really going on in the world of tap until my junior or senior year of high school where we took a trip to New York City to see Bring in the Noise, Bring in the Funk. This was crazy. I had no idea that this kind of tap even existed. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I had to learn this new style. I was so enthralled, so amazed at what I saw that I would do anything in my power to learn this, to, to be exposed to this, to be a part of it. And I knew right then and there, my days in sequins and feathers were over. My family was definitely very, very supportive of my dancing. They saw right away that I absolutely loved class, I loved being on stage, I loved dancing and they would sit through countless hours of rehearsals and performances. Um, my aunt and uncle would come down and watch me perform, my nana would come down and watch me perform, and that was really, really special to me, um, to have my family there and, and watch me. <laughs> um, I definitely owe a lot to my parents for bringing me to dance class two, three, four times a week sometimes, and I'm very, very blessed that I had the opportunity to take dance class. Um, my dad was definitely supportive of my tap dancing. Um, as I got older and took more classes and had to practice more, he put this humongous piece of plywood up in my room so that I could practice. and. I definitely did. I spent a lot of time practicing. My dad was actually the one that took me to go see Tap Dogs, and he had the greatest time. <laughs> and when he found out about Savion, he would not stop talking about him. So it was really, really great to have my dad be so supportive. But so basically growing up in the dance studio, um, for me was life. Um, I had a lot of friends that danced as well from many different schools, so we had a, this nice little close-knit dance group um, that was always what I looked forward to every week. I'm very thankful that I have a very supportive group of friends who understand that tap is my life, um, so they don't get mad at me too, too much when there's events that I can't go to because of class or shows or I have to work. Um, they're very, very understanding and very supportive of what I do and I'm very lucky that I have that. I don't really consider the decisions that I've made um, in my life to be sacrifices for what I want. I chose to be a tap dancer. Um, I chose to have this life. It's what I wanted and with that I have to accept everything that goes along with it. 
I have a day job that I have to work um, in addition to teaching pretty much every night because I have a mortgage to pay. I'm constantly in the studio rehearsing or practicing, trying to make myself better. Um, I don't really get to take class a lot, so um, a lot of my skills I've had to hone on my own. Uh, it definitely makes for a long day, and I, my life just revolves around tap. So I started here at Crate and Barrel uh, with a company in 2006 when I lived in Boston. I worked as a part-time sales associate. And then I decided to go for a promotion, which meant moving to Connecticut. Um, I worked full-time here and taught classes for a couple of years. And it kind of got to me that I wasn't dancing all the time. I decided that my heart really wasn't here. Um, I should always be dancing. And working full-time here in such a position with merchandising where a lot, of, um, a lot of responsibility fell on me, I felt like the company was kind of defining who I was, like this job was defining who I was. But I'm a tap dancer. And I wanted to be, I want to be known as a tap dancer. And so I ended up quitting my job and focusing on my dance career. Everybody thought I was nuts, but in the end, I did something that made me really, really happy. Um, and I feel a lot more fulfilled now with that decision. I came back to Crate and Barrel part-time over the holidays a couple of years ago and ended up staying part-time. So I'm still here, I still work with the merchandising team. Um, a typical day here at Crate could involve just about anything you can imagine from tearing down to setting up new displays, reworking old displays, building furniture, painting, lighting, accessorizing. The thing that I love is that every day is so different, uh, so it definitely keeps me on my toes. Also, I work with really, really great people. I wouldn't change that either. Uh, they kind of keep me sane in the retail world. <laughs> I think the person who has helped me the most would be my fellow Connecticut tap dancer, Chris Irk. Chris was basically my first tap mentor. I met him about five years ago at a workshop that my studio held. And he was the first person to really teach me about rhythm tap. I think one of the biggest concepts I learned from Chris was how to incorporate movement and how to understand movement within the rhythm and within the actual dance. Uh, it was really a new way of thinking for me because I had always had choreographed arms and choreographed formations and he basically said forget everything you learn, just relax and get into the groove. Um, so trying to work through the um, awkwardness of relaxing, uh, he gave me some really, really good pointers and exercises to do to help me loosen up, and it's definitely made me, I've definitely seen a change over the past five years. Chris and I worked a lot on improv. He was the first person to really tell me about the basics and explain uh, pretty much what improv was. I had never done it before. Um, I might have seen it a few times and not have known, but it was a completely new concept for me. And at first it was a little bit difficult to grasp, but he was right there with me, um, super, super supportive, and gave me the tools that I need to just take home and practice. Chris is super, super supportive of all of my tap endeavors. He motivates and encourages me to keep going and to work hard, to put myself out there, to go to auditions, to see shows, to make videos. He's definitely somebody whose opinion I value and he's, Chris has always been there for me and it's just really, really great having somebody like him support my growth and encourage and motivate me as a tap dancer. Definitely throughout history, there's been so many admirable people who have really helped to shape TAP and bring it towards the future and 
really make it what it is today. Well, some of the people that I admire most right now um, is this new generation of female tap dancers. They are putting themselves out there and making people notice tap. And they're sexy, they're fierce, they're hard hitting, and they're still feminine. And to be a woman tap dancer and to see this happening is really, really inspiring and it makes me want to work even harder to be a part of that. One of the biggest obstacles that I'm still overcoming is finding class or being able to find time to go to class or having the funds to go to class. There's really not a lot here in Connecticut, but when there is a class, it's usually at night and I'm usually teaching. So it's really rare that I actually get to take weekly classes. But when I do, I take away these little nuggets of information and, and bigger concepts that I then take back to the studio with me and just hash out by myself. YouTube has also helped tremendously, not only with my own growth, um, learning about history and just being able to see performances and have everything at your fingertips is it's just amazing and it's so great that pretty much everybody knows about it. I definitely use YouTube to my advantage. Um, being able to show my students right then and there a video of Honey Coles or the Nicholas Brothers it really helps to get them interested in the history and they can go home and, and they they can check it out on their own. You know, I post videos on my blog pertaining to things that we study in class that I think are relevant for them to check out. And it's really rewarding when students want to learn about history and they go out on their own and research people because the information is right there. I feel like the Tap family is pretty small and very close-knit and we're all contributing in different ways but towards the same purpose. So no matter what we do, Tap is going to be here to stay. And I think that as a community, as a Tap community, that we can really pull together even doing different things and getting people interested in Tap again. I want people to know what real TAP is, who made it important, why it's important, how it changed, and where it's going. I try to be as forward thinking as I can with my choreography, but at the same time I like to throw in old classic cool steps, you know, something from Slide or a Chuck Green time step. Um, I think it's really important to move forward, but also keep that history because that's really understanding this, this TAP movement. I also think that the future of TAP lies with the next generation. It's important to me to teach them as much as I can about as many different styles and as many different people as I can possibly fit into a 45 minute class one day a week for 33 weeks of the year. <laughs> My goal is to get people interested, to have them think of tap in a different way, to think of it as music, and to be able to understand rhythm without necessarily understanding what tap is. I love tap because it's so different. I feel like anybody can tap dance. If you can walk, you can tap. I have been a musician my whole life and now to look at my tap shoes as another instrument is really inspiring to me and it motivates me to keep going and to keep pushing and to get tap to move forward and get noticed. Um, I feel like we're all doing our own little thing but yet we're doing it together to really get out there and get noticed and get tap on the map. I absolutely could not imagine my life without my tap shoes.